So starting off our talk on cold injuries, let's quickly review how we lose heat. Conduction, heat loss from direct contact. Radiation, heat loss from the air or water around us. Evaporation, heat loss from liquid turning to gas. And convection, heat loss from air moving over our bodies. So what does our body do when we get cold? Well, first thing it tries to do is produce more heat. Hypothalamus starts the cascade of getting cells to increase metabolism. Brown fat will be metabolized to make heat. Skeletal muscles will start working to produce heat by shivering. Peripheral blood vessels will start to constrict and pull blood back to the core to try and keep it warm. For the most part, these work great at keeping core body temperature up. The trade-off is that by pulling warm body away from the peripheries, we now have cold peripheries. And that's where cold injuries start. So the cold injuries we'll talk about in this video are the non-freezing cold injuries. Injuries where the tissues don't start to freeze and the core body temperature isn't affected at all. These would include things like trench foot, chillblains, and frost nip. Frost nip's pretty easy. It's just a superficial insult to tissue that's caused by cold. It's a little bit of numbness in the tissue, some slight redness, maybe a little bit of discomfort. You could almost think of it like superficial frostbite. Really important point, tissues haven't frozen in frost nip. No permanent damage, get the patient inside and in the warm, they should be just fine. We've probably all had frost nip, standing outside on the bus for a cold day. Your cheeks get rosy red, a little waxy or tough. It's just frost nip. Chillblains, apart from being a fun word to say, is also called cold pernio. The word chillblains comes from an old English, chill meaning cold, and blegen meaning sore. And that's exactly what it is. Reddish and purple sores that develop on the body after exposure to cold weather. These accompany symptoms of burning, itchiness, and pain. They often appear 12 to 24 hours after cold exposure and will resolve within a few weeks. People who live in chronic cold areas and get chillblains often, they'll often have them all winter. And then as temperatures improve, so does their skin. Last but not least, we have trench foot. The name comes from injuries seen in World War I, where soldiers would stand in the cold water at the bottom of trenches for long periods of time, and they would have these debilitating injuries to their feet. They wised up eventually, digging a little trench or canal inside their trench for water co to collect. But it's still commonly seen outside of the military in wet climates. A similar injury started showing up in World War II, where soldiers were in the jungle, um, would be standing in water for extended periods of time. Besides military folk, we can also see this type of injury in any workers or outdoor folks who get their feet wet and leave it for extended periods of time. Basically, trench foot is a type of immersion injury, where the foot is left in cool water between 0 and 15 degrees Celsius, and we start having skin breakdown. It has a few phases, which uh, start with a loss of sensation and numbness in the ex affected extremity. The skin will become pale, white due to extreme vasoconstriction. Once rewarming starts to happen, the skin can become a mottled and pale blue. Decreased blood flow um, initially will have weak peripheral pulses, but they'll eventually strengthen, but the cap refill will still be delayed. There's some damage to the small vessels in the capillary beds, which affects our cap refill. This stage usually lasts a few hours, but can last a few days. Eventually, that numbness will go away and will be replaced with some intense pain and sensitivity blisters will begin to form. Typically, trench foot doesn't progress to necrosis or permanent tissue damage, but there are some long-term effects, things like cold sensitivity in the extremities, extreme vasoconstriction in cold environments, and hyperhidrosis can all occur. Treating trench foot is pretty straightforward. Warm the patient if they are systematically cold, but otherwise just let them warm up on its own. Elevate the limb and let it warm up to room temperature. NSAIDs are great for pain control, especially in the later stages. Abitriptyline and gabapentin are often prescribed as a chronic pain control method.